Sinusitis has two big groups. One is that of acute sinusitis and the other is chronic rhinosinusitis. The acute sinusitis usually presents to the GP or primary healthcare physician with fever, nasal obstruction, nasal discharge and facial pain over the affected sinuses. In this instance, medical treatment would have to be adequate, which means an appropriate antibiotic for at least 10 days with a nasal decongestant to completely resolve the uh, acute sinusitis and bring the sinuses back to its natural state. All patients with acute sinusitis would have a good chance of reverting back to the, a normal sinus uh, condition if adequately treated. Patients who have persistent symptoms in excess of three months, we would then classify them as having chronic rhinal sinusitis. Here we are looking out for mucus discharge from the sinuses into the back of the throat, nasal polyposis, septal deviations or even uh, fungus in the nose and sinuses. Coronal CT scan of the sinuses augment the findings on nasal endoscopy. With a combination of a good history, physical examination, nasal endoscopy and a CT scan of the sinuses, we can accurately diagnose almost all patients who do have a chronic rhinal sinusitis. Upon accurate diagnosis of chronic rhinal sinusitis, we like to subclassify them as just pure rhinal sinusitis, rhinal sinusitis with nasal polyposis or allergic fungal rhinal sinusitis. This can be uh, classified after an, an accurate endoscopy and CT scan of the sinuses. All these patients after diagnosis would have to have a, one course of maximal medical therapy. That would mean an appropriate antibiotic for at least two or three weeks. In addition to the treatment of uh, underlying allergies with an intranasal steroid spray and perhaps even a course of systemic oral steroids. The whole basis of uh, chronic rhinal sinusitis is obstruction of the sinuses. The obstruction is in the form of edema or swelling of the lining of the nose that lines the openings of these sinuses. We need to reduce the edema so that the appropriate antibiotic can work well. This is where the use of systemic oral steroids is the way to go to give the patient the best form of maximal medical therapy. Only after we give the patient an adequate chance with maximal medical therapy can we then consider a form of surgical intervention.